I came here today to share with you a very powerful tool. It's a tool we use all the time. We all, all of us have it. But the thing is that it's so powerful that it can change the world. It can literally shape the generations to come. And the tool that I'm talking about is choice. And before I go into the story about the power of choice, I want you to answer this question for yourself. What's the size of your shoes? And can you see that you are actually bigger than your shoes? It's a trick question, actually. Uh, because when I say shoes, I actually mean all the limits, all the boxes that you have put yourself into, everything that's not letting you live up to your full potential. And I want to say that you can take off those shoes and you can be who you want to be and you can change the world. And a year ago, I did that. I actually took my shoes off. What I did was, um, at that time, I was studying in a university, in a very good university in the UK, and um, I learned that the more knowledge that I got, I wasn't feeling like I was making any difference. I wasn't feeling like I was becoming a better person. The more psychology I learned, the less I could actually help other people. The more I learned about religion and philosophy, the less meaning I saw in my own life. So what happened is that I see that my education was designed to help me find a job, but I wasn't designed to find a job. I think I was designed to create a better world, to change the world. So I made a decision, and before that decision, I found out something uh, that changed my life. I found out that you can change the world with business. So I found social entrepreneurship, and as I was studying it in university, I just thought, wow, that's, you know, that's one of the amazing things that you can do. And I really wanted to be one of those people. Imagine that. You can go around and you can do what you love, change the world and make money doing that. And I thought, that's it. That's what I'm going to be. And so I dropped out of university because I thought, you know, I have to do this. This is it. I'm no more learning. I have to go and learn from experience. So I did that and I came back to my country with the purpose to change the world. And it's only been a year, but I've met amazing people. I've learned so much. Uh, here on the right, you can see my colleague um, and mentor, Fionn Dubbin, who's a, an extremely good and amazing person and social entrepreneur. And this in the middle is the Nobel Prize winner, Muhammad Yunus, and he's the father of social business. And from them and from other people, I learned that you actually don't have to become a social entrepreneur to change the world. Actually, you can do what you love, and that's already making a huge difference. And more importantly, I learned that to change the world, you first have to change your own mindset. You know? So I decided, okay, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to change my mind, I'm going to change who I am, and I'm going to just step over my limits. And I also got inspired by this man, as you can see, he has no arms and legs. He was born without arms or legs. And yet, he is living an extraordinary life, literally. He is making a difference so huge. Um, he is a public speaker, an inspirational public speaker, and he has touched the lives of more than 5 million people in 44 countries. I mean, wow. And he has a wife, and they're expecting their second child. He surfs, he can play golf, he travels a lot. And I just think, I mean, if he can do that with all those obvious limits, what excuse do I have? I don't think there's any excuse. I think I have no limits because he has no limits, you know? I feel that it's all really in our minds and we can overcome those limits. And by the way, he keeps a pair of shoes in his closet because he believes in miracles. You know, I think that's limitless thinking in reality. And so the lesson, the second lesson that I learned, and I think it's one of the most important lessons that I've learned in my life, is that no matter how bad a situation may get, no matter how hard it seems, you always have a choice. The choice to choose your attitude, how you react to the situation, what happens to you, and how you go about doing what it taught you, you know? So I try to learn from everything that happens to me. I try to choose my own attitude. And this especially is shown very well in 
this man's book. Uh, it's Viktor Frankl. He's, uh, he was a Jewish psychiatrist, and he's a Holocaust survivor. So in his book, A Man's Search for Meaning, he's describing his experiences as a prisoner in the Nazi concentration camps. In these camps, literally, it was hell on earth. Everything was taken away from these men. Their names, they became numbers. They were treated as animals. They had no hope, you would think. They had no choice, they were put there by force. They couldn't just say, yes, I'm in. They were literally just forced to be there. They were starving, freezing. And yet, in that hell on earth, Viktor Frankl saw that those men weren't really acting the same way. There was differences how the men were acting in response to the situation. So he discovered that there were three types of men there in the concentration camps. The first one were the ones who became brutal. They literally did anything to survive. The second, those who gave up hope. They committed suicide, or at least attempted to. They just gave up. And the third group, it's, I think, the most amazing thing. The third group of these prisoners, they kept hope and they found meaning in their suffering. And what they did was, they literally went around prisoners' huts, they comforted each other. They could give away their last piece of bread to feed another starving fellow. They gathered together to pray, even though they were missing dinner because of that. You know, they gave so much hope and they kept, and they found the meaning in that. And I mean, this demonstrates that no matter the situation, you can still who you are as a person, even if you don't feel like a person, even if you're treated as an animal. And this shows that all of us humans have the potential to become any one of these people, but it's choice and attitude that makes us and what we become. The third lesson I learned from social entrepreneurs and from meeting amazing people was that you have to see problems as opportunities. You know, you may complain, no jobs, you know, poor governments, wow, like, the, oh, the world is falling apart. But in reality, you can also go and do something about it, you know, find solutions. And social entrepreneurs are the people who use their skills, business tools, to find solutions for the world's challenges. And this amazing man, uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus, he's um, a social business father, as I said. He saw a problem in Bangladesh, his home country. He saw extreme poverty. And he saw that these people who were in extreme poverty, it wasn't really their fault. It, it was something about the circumstances that was not letting them overcome their situation. And it was the fact that they didn't really have access to money, to, to any kind of resources that you would have. And what he did was, he decided, okay, those people have skills, they can do something, so I'm gonna give them a tiny bit of money so that they can at least buy some tools and materials, you know, to start making a living. And so he did, and he uh, created a green bank, and uh, he started with 27 US dollars that he gave to a whole village, uh, and that country is a huge money. And now the bank has more than 8.7 million borrowers, and they're making almost 100% return rate, which means that the people are changing their lives, and they are getting better, better. And so what I think we can take away from that is that you can focus on the problems, but you can also look for the solutions and do something about what is happening, you know. And I think it's not a question about your profession, you don't have to be a social entrepreneur to make a difference. We are actually making an impact every day. Every one of us is making choices every day that is making a global impact with what we buy, especially as consumers. You see, nowadays, we can buy products made in China, India, and Bangladesh. And that's kind of cool because, you know, you get so many things. And you're kind of giving jobs to the people who make those things, but also there's a darker side to that. I bet you've seen this viral video. It's a social experiment they did in Germany. They put this machine on the street that's selling two uh, Euro T-shirts. It's super cheap, like, it's, uh, it means something. There must be something wrong with these T-shirts. And so the people come up, yeah, you know, such cheap T-shirts, let's buy them. And before they can pay, a video shows up. And the video shows how those clothes are actually made. 
and they show that the workers have very, very tough working conditions. They, they work for hours and hours, 16 hours, and they get like 13 cents uh, for what they do per hour. It's, it's just ridiculous. And so they see this video, and then they're given a choice, buy or donate, to change that. So nine out of 10 people actually choose to donate, surprise. And this kind of proves that, okay, we know, we get to know what is happening, I understand, okay, these t-shirts are not very good, so, you know, I know it's so I can make a choice. Yay, I donated, I did a good thing. But there's something, there's something not quite right there, you know. Internet is, having, is giving us access to real-time videos from wars, from uh, catastrophes, we're watching those, and we know so much already about the world, we know how the world works. And education is getting easily accessible, you can access online courses from the best universities in the world. But we know what is happening, so why is it still happening? I say knowing is not enough, it's just not. There's something missing. And I think the missing link is responsibility. The responsibility for our choices, the responsibility for what we do and what we don't do. <sighs> you see, you don't really have to go and change the world like Superman. You don't have to be a superhero. Not, not every one of us has to go and sacrifice our life to change the world. But even if you don't care about poor people in Bangladesh, even if you don't care that you know, those workers are making our cheap t-shirts and they're you know, not having a good life, I can bet that there's something in your city, in your country, something around you that may be bothering you, something that's actually hurting other people, maybe you, and I believe you can do something about it. Imagine you had witnessed the crime on the street and you had done nothing about it. Don't you think you are just as responsible as the criminal, in a way? You know? Think about it. And we can talk about all these problems, but um, I'd like to make a point by stressing this one problem. It was actually mentioned in one of the previous uh, TED Talks, surprise. And um, it's something that will affect us very soon, and it's going to affect us all. And it's the question of food. And I don't know if any of us, if any of you know what this is, but this is a picture of uh, massive soil degradation, uh, soil erosion. And uh, surprise, it's caused by us. And uh, it's because we have given our responsibility to these huge corporations. They push for profit so much that nature just cannot keep up with it. And this is the result. A recent um, report from the United Nations uh, found that we have 60 years left of soil uh, to feed the world. And um, I, I, I don't know about you, but to me, um, this really just, you know, gives me shivers somehow. Just, I just cannot just let it go. I mean, in 60 years, there will be no good soil to actually grow our food. What will happen then? And by the way, who will save us? Who is responsible for this? Who should we punish for this? You may say it's bad business. You know, it's those people, the corporates, they're just evil, evil, well, evil people. They're just, you know, making all the money. They just want to make money and they're squeezing and they're kind of, you know, making these huge ads and we cannot resist them and we have to buy those products because we're just so weak. Sorry, but that's bull. And it means that, you know, those businesses cannot survive if they're not customers who are buying their products, and the customers are us. You know, every one of us is making choices every day that are helping this happen. So don't blame the big business, and of course don't blame yourself, but at least choose something else, do something about it. You can change it. So <laughs> when your children will come up to you and they will ask, Mommy, Daddy, I'm starving. What did you do about this? Why did that happen? What will you say to them? I mean, how, how, how did this even happen? Like, were you just like sitting by the TV? Oh, by the way, oh yeah, world hunger. Wow, I didn't notice that. It's, it's just not working like that. And I believe that every one of us can make something happen to not let that happen. And I think 
The way to change the world is best defined by this wonderful, wonderful lady. You must know her. It's Mother Teresa. And she said it very beautifully that if every one of us would sweep our own doorstep, the whole world would be clean. So look at that. Every one of our own choices, if you combine them, they're super powerful. We can literally change the world if we choose the right thing and if it's many of us choosing the right thing. So I would say we can start with small steps. And first, you start with yourself. You see, as I mentioned in the in the beginning of the talk, it's really about the mindset that you have. It's really about the limitations that you're putting yourself into. It's the shoes that you're wearing. Take them off. Come on, people. Like, it's, it, there's just no time. 60 years left. Your kids are going to starve. Come on, do something, you know? So start with yourself and make better choices. And I believe that if we all start to rapidly make better choices, we can definitely change the world. Thank you. <laughs>